Hey folks, welcome to another Triple T Thursday. For those just joining us, that's Tools, Tips, and Talk, where we'll discuss info for the knife maker. In today's episode, we're going to continue our little mini-series on grinding and grinding tips. So let's get right down to the table and we'll talk about what we're going to discuss today. In last week's episode, we talked about grinding basics and how to get started grinding. So now we're going to talk about plunges and bevels. So what's a plunge? So a plunge is, is this part right here. And this, you can see here, this is where your, your edge kind of ends and your ricasso begins. And it's, there's a little, you know, there's a little swoop here, whatever you want to call it. So getting the plunge lines symmetrical on both sides is important. Getting them at the same angle on both sides and where they terminate at the top and how they terminate. So let's start with that. The angle of the bevel. So remember we talked about uh, using the rest. Well, that means the knife is sitting on its back edge on the platen, or sorry, on the rest. So this line is always going to be perp perpendicular to the way it's sitting on the rest. So if you were to have it on an angle like this, in other words, you're kind of propping up the handle a little bit, okay, then, and let's say it was you were kind of dragging it like this, that means this would be more kind of like this. And sometimes, you know, if you have your handle at an angle, you kind of want the bevel to match. It just gives a nice aesthetic. Um, and there's other reasons when we get into chef knives why you might want this at an angle. So it all depends on, you know, where, you're, where the, the belt is going to be. Because if it looks like this, you are basically running it against, if you're using the rest, you're running it against the rest like this, and here's your belt. Your belt is right there, perpendicular to the rest. Okay, next, let's talk about this little uh, area of the plunge. So, this area is directly proportional to how much of the belt is hanging over the platen. So let's go to the uh, grinder and I'll, I'll tell you a bit more about this. So here we are at our grinder. I've got the belt exactly level with the platen. There's nothing hanging off. And what that's going to do is going to give you that really sharp corner at the top of your bevel. Because when you're pressing, you're doing that bevel, you're supporting by the platen. So if we were to hang this off like this, this part is a lot softer. So what that's going to give you is instead of a sharp line like this, you're probably going to get a nice beveled line like this one, like this. A nice swoop <laughs> uh, like this. The more you hang it off, the more that's going to happen because it's not supported there. So you're going to get a nice curve. When you're doing it like this, okay, you'll get the nice curve here. Then you need to do the same thing on the other side. And you can just use your tracking on your grinder to usually do that. That's when you're doing this side. My rule of thumb, I like to use the width of the steel that I'm using and just use this as a gauge and I'll just put it up against the platen. That's how much I will usually hang the belt over by. That's just my rule of thumb and then it's easy to visualize when I go to the other side. I'll just put my tang up here and I'll make sure that it's the same on both sides. So let's talk about plunge lines and where you should put them. Uh, and that depends on the type of knife. You can see that this knife is going to be a full tang knife because there's no guard, there's no bolster. You can see that the plunge line is ahead of the heel. And that's because you're going to have your hand here. You don't want this sharpened and put the plunge over here 
if your hand is going to be here because you don't want to risk cutting yourself so most full tang knives like this the plunge line will be ahead of the heel if you were to look at something like a chef knife which is very tall okay typically this is going to be two inches two and a half inches so your hand is only going to come to about here so you're not going to cut yourself on chef knives you're typically going to have a plunge like this either on an angle or something like this so that this and this will normally come to a bit more of a point but this will be sharp because you want to be able to sharpen this knife many times and not sharpen this and have a heel that's protruding here so it's usually bad to have an unsharpened heel on a knife you usually want this sharpened right to the edge so your plunge has got to be up here the other knife that is a hidden tang knife that's going to have a guard so on most of my Bowie knives I am going to and this isn't you know I will bring this up even further but I will have the plunge up into the Ricasso above here so this curve right here will be sharp the plunge will end up usually in this little curve here uh, I've got a better one use this to show you I will make the plunge right about here so that this part is sharp and it doesn't matter because this is going to have a guard on it okay so the guard is going to protect your hand from this point hey I wanted to take this moment to talk about our sponsor Maritime Knife Supply if you're looking for steel scribes you name it anything knife making related go check out Maritime Knife Supply you can even shop in US dollars if you're down here in the US shipping is very fast very easy so go check them out okay so let's talk about bevels and how to get the different shapes on your bevels so if you were to take this up to the rest and the platen and run it sit it down and run it straight across the platen okay remember you're going to be pulling with one hand and pushing with the other if you were to just do this with total even pressure you will get a straight line okay something like this okay it'd be straight across assuming you have perfect pressure it should be straight now I don't have any kind of recurve or anything like this and it does curve here but because we're just pulling the knife straight across this will match you know our rest wherever our rest is this is going to match that line now what about different shapes on your bevel if you wanted something like this where which is very typical where you have a bevel that matches the curve of the blade what you're going to do is you're going to be pulling the blade away from the platen as you move it so let's go over the grinder and I'll show you the basics of how to get this okay so we're back at the grinder and I've got my belt hanging over to get that nice curve on my plunge line and now I want to get that swooping bevel here I want the bevel to be from here and then go up to match the curve of the blade so what you're going to do is start your bevel okay and then as you get to the curve here you're going to be pulling I'm accentuating this you're going to be pulling the blade away from the bevel to match this curve so if you wanted a, this is a very gradual curve throughout the whole length of the blade I'm pretty much going to go from like this and then as soon as I get to this point then I'll slowly start to pull I'm pulling this this part over here I'm pulling it away from the blade and that's going to make your bevel curve now this one has a slight recurve um, this one is so slight that it really wouldn't matter uh, I'm gonna be able to just do a straight pull here typically I'm gonna have my bevel come up and just go straight here I'm not gonna match this curve um, but if this was like a kukri those are pretty challenging because you're gonna be coming in at an angle like this then going straight and then pulling it away this way. So
So I would stay away from anything with a big inside curve while you're learning. Stick with the outside curves. They're much easier to grind. And when you get to things like, like um, karambits, which is a very, very steep inside curve. It's a very, very tough grind uh, to master and you really need a, you really need a, a short belt, a narrow belt or um, a lot of practice. So for this one again, straight and as soon as you get to the point where it starts to curve, then you're going to evenly pull the belt away. And there's, there's nothing that's just going to replace practice to get these right. So like I mentioned in the last video, scribe lines, I got some blue dicum here, some layout fluid. Scribe lines are important. When you're first starting out, I would suggest you paint the whole side of the knife, then take some calipers and do that um, wherever you want your bevel to be. Draw that with a line. Then when you're grinding, don't go past your line. And in fact, if you wanted it here, I would actually draw my line a little below that because you will have a tendency to, to hit that line and go a bit further. So you're probably going to be doing preheat treat grinding. So put your bevel below where you think you want it on the final knife because post heat treat, you're going to probably be pushing that up a little higher as well. So layout fluid is your friend. Uh, I use calipers to draw those. And uh, remember, you're going to, when you do your bevels, you need to put some layout fluid on your edge and use something like this or a center line scribe to get that line so that your bevels match and you don't have them over to one side or the other. Some other tools, some people like, this is a file guide, and some people like to lock their knife in, uh, in a file guide, um, you know, like this so that they can um, vary the plunge because of course if you're holding your knife up like this and you're gr sorry it'd be like this and uh, you're grinding this is going to touch like if it's like that this is going to touch the side of the grinder side of the platen so it's going to basically mark off your plunge lines the problem with this is you got to still make sure that your belt is hanging over exactly the same distance on either side. The belt is going to kind of come in contact with these. And of course, it's hard to use the, if you're going to use the rest, it's hard to use the rest with a file guide. You're kind of rubbing this across the, the, the rest. It's, it's just more difficult. So I don't use these for that purpose. I usually use these to lock something in the mill or something like that. Um, but a lot of people are successful with these, so maybe you want to try it. All right, let's talk about some common problems. One of the first common problems uh, we call the smiley, or I call the smiley at least. It's when you do your plunge line, your plunge line comes up here and then does this. Okay, so you get this. Or whatever wherever your your plunge goes you get this this part where it goes up too high and then here so the reason this happens is because you're putting this part so starting right here you're putting this up against the platen with the platen right here okay you're starting at your plunge don't do that start somewhere in the middle and work into your plunge it's much easier that way to control your plunge line because if you press the knife up against the platen you're always going to be putting more pressure here and that's what's causing this if you start over here and just gently put the knife up and then go back and forth you won't get these you won't get this up high and then these goofy dips the second most common problem is just uneven lines. Like you've got basically a wandering bevel like that. Maybe that's worse than most, but I'm just trying to give you an example. The reason usually for this is if you're, if I'm doing the right side and I'm like this, you're pushing too much with this hand. Remember in the last video, I said, this is your pull hand 
all you're doing is pulling with this hand. This is the hand doing the pressure. So if you're pressing with this and just pulling, this is going to be a straighter line. If you're starting to push and do this, maybe you're, you're, you're pressing this side, you're trying to compensate and press like this on this side of the platen, that's what's giving you these wavy lines. So push, pull. So of course, I'm only talking about some basic grinding here, uh, relatively simple plunges. Um, you're going to get more complicated ones. There's compound grinds where you'll see like a grind here and then it'll be a different grind here. Think of a tanto where these are not tantos, but this is a flat grind on one bell on one angle and then the tip is on another angle. That's another compound grind. Maybe we'll get into those in the future, but for now, practice your bevels. Practice pulling that knife away to get it to match the curve and just get to grinding. I hope this video on grinding bevels and plunges helped you guys out. Uh, just practice, keep at it. On the next episode, we're gonna talk about grinding false edges and distal tapers. We'll see you on the next one, guys.